Good morning, Harvest Christian Center. Good morning. Uh, glad you're out there with us today. They just did the song, Splish Splash, old song, but one that uh, has a lot of good words in it. Uh, some of those words says, I got a river of life flowing out of me, makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. You know, so many times we sing these songs and I think we sing them out of, uh, or I sing them, let me put it that way, just out of knowledge of the song. Uh, but can I say that sometimes I feel more like a stagnant pond than a river of life? Sometimes I feel like that there is nothing good pouring out of me. Uh, this morning, we're going to uh, share the announcements real quick. Uh, there was a screen on how to give your tithes and offerings. Thank you for being faithful. Uh, God bless you when you give of your first fruits, and, uh, and, and God bless you. Uh, tonight at five is game night. We want you to be a part of that. I'm going to go ahead and bring the word, uh, the word that the Lord has laid on my heart, uh, and then we will finish worship after that. Um, I believe that serving God is a lot like a video game. Uh, some people would go, what? You call it a game? No. no, I don't call it a game. I call it that the levels get harder as you go. Uh, when I first came to Christ, it was easy to uh, to know what I needed to give up. And now it's a little harder because it used to be physically what he was challenging me with, and now it's an affair of the heart. Now it's things of the heart that he is uh, working with me on, so the levels are getting a little harder. Uh, I'm going to preach right now, uh, and then uh, let's pray, and then I'm going to bring you the word, and then we'll worship together. Father, I thank you today for who you are. Uh, I do not enjoy the week that you've given me, Lord, uh, writing messages and tossing them and writing messages and tossing them. Uh, I don't always enjoy being rebuked. But I thank you that you love me enough to rebuke me. So God, I would say to you right now, as I begin to present the word to my church family, if there's anything I'm going to say that would dishonor you, Silence my lips. If you need to wreck the video so it won't play, if you need to uh, let me be sick. But if this is what you would have me give, then I pray that you anoint me to speak it today. Because I don't want to offend you in these troubled times. I have an audience of one today, and that's you. Whether there's a house full of people or whether there's no one, I have an audience of one, and that's you. So I'm asking you to anoint me today to speak what you would have spoken. Your precious and holy name. Amen. My title today is Something for Everyone, Something for Everyone. Uh, we're going to read from Matthew chapter 14, uh, beginning with verse 22. Matthew chapter 14, beginning with verse 22. It's an old story you're familiar with. I've preached it many times. Uh, but not like today. Matthew 14, 22 says, And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side, while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with the waves, for the wind was contrary. There was a storm. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth thou art the Son of God. Father, bless our time together in the word in your precious name. 
The first thing we want to look at in this story is the verse 22, and it says, Jesus sent them away. He constrained them. He made them go. He made them get away, and he sent away the multitude. Now, he had just fed the multitude uh, with two loaves and fishes, and he had literally, now he's telling them to go away. Uh, but they were in the middle of a storm when they got out in the boat, but they were in the center of his will. Some of us need to know today that we, even though we might be in the midst of a storm, we're in the center of his will. They were right where he sent them, right where they told him or where he told them to go. But know this, know this today, you are where he sent you. Jesus sends the disciples away and then he sent the multitude away. Jesus needed to be alone with the Father. Some of us need to know that we need time alone with the Father. We need time alone with the Father. Away from YouTube, social media, negative people, even from our own stinking thinking and just focus on Jesus. Some of us just need to get away from everything and focus on Jesus. The storm came and Jesus wasn't there. He wasn't there. And it gives us a time frame. Say, how do you know? Well, it says he sent him away in the eve. If you look at this uh, story in Matthew and then in Mark and in John, it's also written. And it says that he sent him away in the eve and that he came to them at the fourth watch. So he wasn't there with them at the time that the storm came. And then Jesus went walking on the water. Jesus went walking on the water. Uh, Jesus is about to show up in the storm. Maybe somebody needs to hear that today, that Jesus is about to show up in the midst of your storm. But now let me say this clearly. Before you go shouting and jumping and going, whoo, you need to hear the rest of the story. You need to hear the rest of the story because I like to shout right there too when Jesus says he's going to show up in my storm, but I need to hear the rest of the story first. Jesus went to them on the water and they didn't know it was him. He went to them on the water. He was about to show up in the midst of their storm and they didn't know it was him. They thought it was a ghost. Church, some of us need to understand. Some of us need to understand that if we don't even know who Jesus is when he shows up in the midst of our storm, if it's the next conspiracy theory or the next ghost or the next goblin or the next, we need to know who he is. We ought to be able to recognize Jesus. The disciples ought to have been able to recognize that it was Christ that showed up in the storm. And we can say, well, the storm was raging. This is their Savior. This is their Messiah. This is my Lord. I ought to know who he is in the midst of my storm. Moving on. For some, we're so busy rebuking and, and binding COVID-19 that we forgot to get along with Jesus. I'm going to move on. Jesus spoke to them. And these are the first words. And I love this because I missed this part. So many times in this story, I missed this part. He said, be of good cheer. Before he told them it was him, before he said, don't be afraid, he said, be of good cheer. Can I say this to someone out there today? Stop wallowing. Stop whining. Be of good cheer. You are a child of the Most High God. You are a king among the kings. You are literally born again, blood-bought, spirit-filled. Stop being negative. Be of good cheer. That's the first words out of Jesus' mouth. Be of good cheer. He rebuked me on that this week. He rebuked me on that, and I'll share a little more in a moment. But in the midst of the storm, Jesus didn't say uh, anything except be of good cheer. Then he said, I am here. Don't be afraid. I am here. Don't be afraid. Peter said, still with doubt in his words, he said, if it's you, Lord, if it's you, let me come to you. If it's you, Lord, let me come to you. Jesus said, come, Peter, come. Peter gets out and he walks on the water. And I relate myself to Peter way, way, way too much. I'm loud and I'm proud and I get myself in trouble with my mouth way too many times. And Peter jumps out of the boat or crawls out of the boat or however he got out of the boat and he begins to walk on water. And this is another place the Lord began to rebuke me this week. And the storm was still howling. And Peter even though he stepped out in faith, 
got his eyes on the storm instead of on the master. He got his eyes on the storm instead of on the master. Can I say to you today, it doesn't matter if I'm out here screaming faith, faith, faith over fear, fear, fear. If my focus is on my faith trying to defeat fear, if my focus is on more of anything else trying to defeat something and my focus is not on the master, I'm in sin. God rebuke me. Now that's not one of those adultery sins. That's not one of those out drunk every night sins. But God literally began to rebuke me because he said, you are so caught up in what everyone around you is saying, whether it be good, whether it be bad. You're so caught up in the midst of all this mess. You're so caught up. I said, Lord, I'm not focused on COVID. He said, no, you're focused on what all the Christians are saying. And you're focused on what? What about what I say? You're focused on the next CNN news report or the new next Fox news report and I swear I wasn't going to do this today but let me just say this this should be my source this should be my source and when my focus is lost on everything else I'm like Peter while I jumped out in faith and we're doing what God called us to do and we're in the center of his will I lost my faith to sin because my focus wasn't on him and move on Storm was howling. Peter lost his faith by looking at the storm. Some of us need to step out in faith, but in doing so, we need to keep our eyes on Jesus. I am so close to deleting every single video that comes my way of the next this or that because my focus needs to be on Christ. And immediately the scripture says Jesus stretched out his hand. Peter called and Jesus stretched out his hand. I'm so thankful today that when I began to repent before God for losing my focus that he stretched out his hand and he said, I'm right here. And Jesus showed up and he got on the boat with them. The storm was still raging and when they realized it was him, that's when the storm stopped. That's when the peace came. Get this today. When they realized it was him, it says when they knew him, when they knew him, the storm ceased. As long as we're focused on the storm being from here or there, as long as we're focused on, on did, is this judgment from God or is this, none of that applies at this moment. Our focus needs to be on him. God has allowed the temple to be destroyed over and over and over in scripture. Because people's focus got on a temple and not on him. Let me move on. When Jesus showed up, they realized it was him. The storm ceased. When they got their focus on him, they began to worship him. They began to worship him. When they finally realized it was him, they worshiped him. The story goes on. Read the rest of the story, but don't stop right now and read it. God's trying to speak to you. There's something for everyone. The storm passed and the country heard the word. When they finished and landed the boat, the entire country heard the word. When they focused on the fact that it was Jesus showing up, they literally, the country, came to Christ. It says the country brought all that were sick, all that were afflicted, all that were diseased, and he healed them. But if our focus is the storm, they're never going to hear about our Jesus. They're going to hear about our negative thoughts of why the storm is here. They're going to hear about our negative thoughts about is this from, is this, when are we going to get to, why are we not, who is and who isn't wearing a mask. Church, if you want to know if these are the last days, read the book. He said, blessed is the man that reads the book of Revelation. Blessed. Blessed. You want to be blessed? Get your head out of the news and get it into the book. I know we need to know the times. I understand that. But if we get to a place where we're caught up, I got to move. I got to go. It's an old story. You've heard me preach it many times. But I'm going to share it one more time today. There's something here for everyone. I'm going to go back over it real quick. Maybe you missed this. They were forced, the disciples 
were forced by Jesus to leave the gathering. They were forced by Jesus to leave the gathering and the multitude and go out in the midst of the storm. They were forced by Jesus Some of us are crying way too much about, let me rephrase that. I've been whining way too much about what I don't have instead of what I do have, and that's Jesus. I've let my focus get on what I don't have and my hugs and my kisses, and God rebuked me. And he said, I, through my son Jesus, sit them away from the multitude. You saying, are you saying Jesus did that? That's not what I said. I said in this story, he sent them away. They were in the center of his will, but not in the midst of the fellowship. In the center of his will, but not in the midst of the fellowship. They went out into a storm and they were afraid for their lives. It doesn't say that they were complaining about being sent out. It says that they were afraid for their lives. And Jesus took a while showing up. Sent them out in the eve and didn't show up till the fourth watch. You say, well, when was the fourth watch? Look it up. Dig, you got time. Their focus was on the storm, not on Christ. My focus has been on people. And instead of being a stream of living water, I've been in the center of his will and stagnant. And I repent before you, and I've already repented before God. Let me move on. Took a while for him to get there. Jesus shows up and the first thing he says is be cheerful. If this is the last days and we believe that it is, be cheerful. Maranatha, Jesus is coming soon. Be excited that we don't have to stay for an eternity here, that we have an eternity in heaven with him. Be excited. He said be cheerful. For I am here. Don't be afraid. Peter wants to be like Jesus, even in his doubt. This is where it hurts for me because I relate to Peter. I want to be like Jesus, but I get so distracted. The latest conspiracy theory, the latest news report, when God was calling me to repent. Even in leaping out in faith, I could not get my eyes off the storm. Even when I've been walking on the water, I can't get my eyes off the storm. God woke me up. Jesus is waiting with outstretched arms. He's waiting. Jesus showed up and they didn't realize it was him. Maybe there's so many conspiracy theories out there among born again children of God because we don't realize that Jesus is in the mix. Maybe we're so focused on what the next conspiracy is that we're not focusing on the one that really matters in the midst of it. Maybe that doesn't apply to you, but it certainly did to me. Then the scripture says they worshiped him and you're going to get an opportunity in a few minutes. Then the entire country brought all that was diseased unto him that they might touch his garment. In closing, I want to share one more time. I believe there's something here for everyone that's listening to me today. And for those that are listening to a replay, I believe there's something for you. Some of us need to realize we're in the center of God's will. Even though it don't feel like it. Some of us need to repent for our selfishness in wanting and expecting God to do it our way. We've been taught for so long that if we ask, 
name it and claim it. And we forget the fact that that needs to be in his will, in accordance to his will. So while we rebuke sickness in the name of Jesus, he sent his disciples out in the storm away from the multitude, the gathering, the church service. Some of us need to repent because we want God to do it our way and he's got a bigger plan in mind. Some of us truly need to repent and I want to preach on repentance this morning. Maybe this is. But I believe there are people that are hearing my voice right now that need to get off your couch and on your knees and say, God, forgive me. I've made every bit of this about me. I've made attending church about me. There's no wonder I'm not allowed to be there right now because I've literally made the focus about me instead of you. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Help me not to get caught up. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me. Forgive me. I repent, Lord. Some needs our hearts turned back to him as he's done for me this week. While I was in the center of his will, by the way, I believe my attitude and lack of keeping my focus on him has done more damage than Satan himself over the last few weeks. My family has heard me complain about everything out there. Instead of being cheerful over the joy of my Jesus. And if I'm going to damage my own children, what I walk with, they'll run with. If everything I post and everything I say and everything I do is negative, 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 how can I expect them to be cheerful and positive about the God they serve? And again, I say, Father, forgive me. Forgive me for losing focus on you. For some today, you need to hear that Jesus is on the way to get you out of your storm. He's on his way. Be ready to know who he is when he gets there. Be ready. Get your eyes off the storm and on him. Jesus is about to show up in the midst of your mess. He's about to show up and he's about to solve the problem. Jesus is about to show up. For some, you need to be cheerful. And don't be afraid. Jesus is right here in the middle of the storm with you. And I pray this is the last time I ever preach about this storm that this country and world is going through. I am over it. Jesus is right here in the midst of it. For some, we need to worship. We're about to worship. Just get lost in worship. It doesn't matter what songs are next. I don't even know. But I know the one who's worthy to be sung to. And I want to know him when he shows up. So I don't need every Tom, Dick, and Harry out there to tell me who he is and what's going on. I just need to know the peace speaker in the storm and know who he is when he shows up. Probably more for me today than you. For some, we need to worship. And for some, we need to realize that we're in his will because the crowd all in the country are about to hear about Jesus. It's already beginning. It's already starting. For those that didn't lose focus and haven't lost focus, They're already there. They're already focusing on the Savior. My friends, if you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, you need to repent and say, forgive me, Lord, save my soul. There is a prayer line on the screen. There is a website that you can go to, and we will respond to you. We will call if we need to. We will pray you through to Jesus. But the time for worrying about the storm, the time for playing Christianity is over. I hear people that, oh, I repent, I repent, I repent, and they don't know what the word means. 
Repent means to turn from. That means I can't go back to listening to and speaking of the garbage of the world. I've got to focus on my Jesus. For some Christians today, you need to repent. For others whose lives are glitch-free or perfect, I had to throw that word in there. For you guys, you need to just worship and, 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 and be the heroes that you are. For those of you that walk on water, I'm proud of you. Keep walking. But keep your focus on the main thing. We're about to see a world have the opportunity to know Christ Jesus, our Savior. And when he shows up in the middle of our storm, we won't be afraid because it's a ghost. But we'll know Jesus is here. When he sends me out of my comfort zones, I'll know it's him. When he lifts me up, when I fall, I know it's him. And when I'm speaking negatively, remember I said that about the video game? Final thought. The closer I get to the end, to the wind, the harder the levels. The closer I get to the wind, the harder the levels. I must be getting close to the end. Because serving God is getting really hard. Not because of the world we live in, but because he's cleansing me. He's cleansing my heart conditions. It's real easy to repent for those big things that the world sees. Not so much for those little things that nobody knows going on in my life, my heart and mind. For those negative attitudes. Something here for you too. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus as we prepare to worship. I call your people, God, through the blood of Jesus back to repentance back to holiness and walking before you that we might know you in the midst of the storm that we might know you and who you are god i call faith over fear and more than anything i call that we would be so close to you that you can prick our hearts and 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 we would know and we wouldn't look at the world around us but we'd keep our eyes on you I believe you're our soon returning king. Let us be a church that is ready for our king. Save souls, heal bodies in your precious name. Amen. We love you. Thank you so much for being with us today. Let's take some time and worship together. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.